August 8th was the black day of the German army and the history of the war. This was the worst experience I had to go through. German General Erich Ludendorff wrote this about the Battle of Amiens that began on August 8th, 1918, in his memoir detailing his experiences in World War I. He said this not because of the ground loss to the advancing allies, this was one of the largest advances that they had in the war, but because the morale of the German troops had sunk to the point where large numbers of them began to capitulate. We will return to Ludendorff shortly and discuss why this is important. This animated French map shows the area that the Battle of Amiens took place on from August 8th to the 13th. Here you can see the army boundaries being drawn. The British 4th Army is at the top of the map at the northern end of the advance, with the French 1st and 3rd Armies in the south. The Australians and Canadians were the spearhead of 4th Army's advance. The Allies had sneaked into position with thousands of heavy and super heavy field guns, howitzers, and more than 600 tanks that were supported by over 2,000 aircraft. The Canadians were also snuck into position. They had units send fake signals closer to Ypres in the north to confuse the Germans into thinking that's where they were. They quietly shifted down to around Amiens and set up in place for the attack on the 8th. The Battle of Amiens began exactly at 4.20 a.m. with a barrage fired of around 900 guns firing on the German lines as the infantry simultaneously moved out of the trenches right behind the artillery fire. This allied attack was highly successful. On the 8th alone, the Canadians gained 13 kilometers of ground, the Australians 11, the French 8, and the British 5. As we can see here, the advance continued on the 9th with more ground gained. The Canadians gained another 6 kilometers that day. As the fighting continued on the 9th, as it can be seen here with the French advance in the south, the Germans brought up more reinforcements to try to stem the Allied attack. The French attacks to the south were very successful. In Forgotten Victory, the First World War, Myths and Realities, and there's a link in the description to buy this book, which you can support OTD by doing, historian Gary Sheffield wrote that Amiens was truly a watershed battle, the turning point of the war. The Allies continued to push the Germans back on the 10th, particularly in the south, but the French attacks were quite successful. Here you can see the Germans bringing up their reinforcements to try and stop the British French attacks. Fighting continued on on the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Additionally, this is where narratives about the Battle of Amiens typically stop. However, it continued on after this, with French forces much further south continuing the advance and pushing the Germans back. The Germans suffered anywhere from 25 to 30,000 casualties, while the Allies suffered just under 20,000 casualties. The Battle of Amiens began what is now known as the Hundred Days Offensive. This massed Allied advance brought World War I to an end in November 1918. The Allies, France, Britain, Canada, Australia, Belgium, and the United States dealt the Germans defeat after defeat from Amiens onwards. The German army was thoroughly crushed on the battlefields of the Western Front. Now back to Ludendorff. He helped to form the foundation of what is known as the stab in the back myth. The proponents of the theory insist, and some people still believe it today, that the Imperial German Army did not lose World War I on the battlefield, but was instead betrayed by certain citizens on the home front. This included Jews, revolutionary socialists who fomented strikes and labor unrest, and Republican politicians who wanted to overthrow the German monarchy. All of this resulted in decreased morale among the German army as they read letters from their families and newspapers from back home about the deteriorating conditions. 
We now know this is complete and utter nonsense. Ludendorff himself even knew this not to be true. And laying the foundation of the stab in the back myth, Ludendorff ignored that he himself had asked the German politicians for an armistice on military grounds. The famous Black Day of the German Army quote about Amiens is part of his myth-making. Clearly, morale has an impact on what happens on a battlefield. But to dismiss the large tracts of territory taken by the Allies, which also contributes to decreased morale, he was trying to establish the stab in the back myth very early on. This comes from his memoirs published in 1919, following the end of the war. Ludendorff continued to decry what he called November criminals who had betrayed his army. These supposed criminals were the politicians who had negotiated the armistice with the Allies. Also in his memoir, Ludendorff wrote, the proud German army, after victoriously resisting an enemy superior in numbers for four years, performing feats unprecedented in history, and keeping our foes from our frontiers, disappeared in a moment. Our victorious fleet was handed over to the enemy. The authorities at home, who had not fought against the enemy, could not hurry fast enough to pardon deserters and other military criminals, including among these many of their own number, themselves and their nearest friends. As we also know, Ludendorff had connections to the early Nazis. In November 1923, Ludendorff joined Adolf Hitler and the early Nazis and the Beer Hall punched, a failed attempt to take over the government. He soon fell out with Hitler and other allies he had gained in his cause with the stab in the back myth, as they were competing over who should have power in a successor government to the Weimar Republic. As he aged, he became more and more involved in his own fantasies about so-called supranational powers, like Jews, Catholics, and Freemasons, who had joined forces to keep Germany weak. Two years before his death, he published a treatise on total war, in which he attributed the German defeat in the war to the country's failure to entrust its fate to a military dictator. The Battle of Amiens clearly had an impact in ending World War I. However, its legacy extends beyond that, as we've seen. It was used in a way to create a myth about Germany losing the war at home and not on the battlefield. However, the Battle of Amiens itself is an example of how the German army was crushed on the Western Front, and this began in August 1918.